Hi friends, today we will see some important factors about mechanical ventilation. We all know why we need to ventilate and when we need to ventilate the patient. So mainly I am going to talk about some important functions and settings of the ventilator. Then I try to include some guidelines for the beginners as well. So let's begin. There are two main categories of ventilators. It includes non-invasive ventilator and invasive ventilator. Non-invasive ventilator, these devices provide breathing support through an external interface such as mask or nasal prongs. For example, we can uh, say BiPAP machine or CPAP machines. Invasive ventilator, patients on long-term ventilation may require ventilation through an endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube insert. That is invasive mode of ventilation that we are usually using in hospital setup. Goal of mechanical ventilation. Achieve and maintain adequate pulmonary gas exchange. Minimize the risk of lung injury. Reduce patient's work of breathing. Optimize patient's comfort. These are the main settings on ventilator. First one, trigger mode and sensitivity. Respiratory rate. Tidal volume. Positive end expiratory pressure, that is PEEP flow rate inspiratory time, fraction of inspired oxygen. Next we will see in details of our settings. Trigger. There are two main ways to initiate a ventilator deliver breath, pressure triggering and flow by triggering. Others are time and pressure trigger ventilation. This time and pressure trigger ventilations are not commonly used because of the complications. When pressure triggered is used, a ventilator delivered breath is initiated if the demand valve senses a negative airway pressure deflection greater than the trigger sensitivity, what we set in the sensitivity. So when the patient is trying to initiate a breath, there will be a pressure changes inside the circuit. That pressure changes will detect the demand valve inside the machine and this will trigger a breath. When flow by triggering is used, the circuit has a constant flow in and out of the T-piece. It measures that flow. While you are not breathing, flow out of the patient equals to flow into the patient. When you try to take a breath, you suck some flow of the circuit and the machine detects that and it will make inequality of inflow and outflow. This will trigger a breath. Look at the picture here. You can see uh, in and out here in inflow and outflow it is uh, continuous and when the patient is having effort for the breathing okay this patient will suck some air from the constant flow here so this sucking this sucking will make some inequality of inflow and outflow this will sense the machine and the machine will trigger a breath Next, tidal volume. The tidal volume is the amount of air delivered with each breath. The appropriate initial, initial tidal volume depends on the numerous factors, most notably the disease for which the patient requires mechanical ventilation. Usually, uh, the ancient time we were following the body weight. Nowadays, it is we should take ideal body weight. Uh, depends on the height and weight and multiply with uh, 6 to 8 usually we are taking like that so we'll get a uh, figure that figure we will set accordingly for the tidal volume respiratory rate for most patients an initial respiratory rate between 12 and 16 breaths per minute reasonable next positive end expiratory pressure P Applied PEEP is generally added to mitigate and expiratory alveolar collapse. A typical initial applied PEEP is 5 cm H2, that is physiological PEEP we are saying. However, up to 20 cm H2 may be used in patients undergoing low tidal volume ventilation for acute respiratory distress syndrome. The, because the PEEP will help the alveoli from collapse and to improve the uh, oxygen perfusion. Flow rate. The peak flow rate is the maximum flow delivered by the ventilator during one inspiration. Peak flow rate of 60 liter per minute may be sufficient. Although 
higher rates are frequently necessary. It depends on the patient's condition. Doctors will decide that. Then, inspiratory time and expiratory time relationship. That's what we are calling IE ratio on ventilator. During spontaneous breathing, the normal IE ratio is 1 is to 2, indicating that for normal patients, the, the exhalation time is about twice as long as the inhalation time. If exhalation time is too short, breath stacking occurs, resulting in an increase in end expiratory pressure, also called autopy. If you did not understand this one, just do uh, take one inspiration and do the expiration as short, shorter than the inspiration. Do it again. So take inspiration and the expiration short, then do again inspiration. Then after two or three times you will feel you will feel breath stacking and you can experience the auto -pill. Depending on the disease process, such as in ARDS, the IE ratio can be changed to improve ventilation. Next one is fraction of inspired oxygen, FiO2. This is the main thing in the ventilator. The lowest possible fraction of uh, inspired oxygen necessary to meet oxygen oxygenation goal should be used. This will decrease the likelihood that adverse consequences of supplemental oxygen will develop such as absorption at electasis, accentuation of hypercapnia, airway injury, and pharyngeal malinjury. The main factor is some uh, long-term patients may uh, need, need only 21% of the atmospheric uh, oxygen. So we, if like that patient, we are using more like 60% or 80% oxygen, it will make complication for the patient like absorption and lactasis or hypercapnia like this. Now we will move to modes of ventilation. A basic distinction in mechanical ventilation is whether each breath is initiated by the patient or by the machine, assist more or control more. Dynamic hybrids of these two assist and control modes are also possible and control mode without assist is now mostly obsolete. These are the basic modes of ventilator, uh, CPAP, BiPAP, CMB, AC, IMB, SIMV, spontaneous. We will see uh, these in details. Here, CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure. A PEEP is applied to a spontaneous breathing patient. Indications are same as PEEP, but in addition, Patient must have adequate lung function to sustain eucapnic ventilation. Can use uh, this one in ET2 or face mask. Usually we are using this CPAP for before the uh, during the weaning of the patient. Just before the extubation, we will keep the patient on CPAP. We will observe, then we will go for extubation. BiPAP, bi-level positive airway pressure allows one to apply IPAP and EPAP. IPAP provides a positive pressure breath and it improves hypoxemia or hypercapnia. EPAP, it is essentially a PEEP, improves oxygenation by increasing the FRC, that is uh, functional residual capacity, the volume of air present in the lungs at the end of passive expiration and uh, enhancing alveolar recruitment. Next, uh, CMB, Continuous Mandatory Ventilation. In this, ventilator delivers a preset tidal volume at the set time of interval. Should only be used when the patient is properly medicated uh, with a combination of sedatives, uh, respiratory presence, and neuromuscular blockers. So, we we'll usually use this ventilation for like uh, if the patient wants to be ventilator ventilated for at least 24 hours like uh, for example if the patient is fighting uh, with the ventilator, ventilator ventilator continuously or seizure patient or uh, chest injury patients like that this patient this machine will uh, never mind the patient's respiratory thrive so the patient will give continuous uh, ventilation with the preset tidal volume and set time interval Next, we will see here AC, assist control. 
patient always receives a mechanical breath at the time of assessment indicated when full ventilatory support is needed uh, used when the patient has a stable respiratory drive 10 to 12 breaths uh, advantages of this ventilation includes a very small work of breathing when sensitivity and flow rate set properly and this more this allows the patient to control the respiratory rate and one disadvantage uh, includes alveolar hyperventilation IMV intermittent mandatory ventilation in this Patient can breathe spontaneously at any tidal volume between the mechanical breaths. Primary disadvantage is chance for breath stacking. Therefore, care should be taken to set the high pressure limit to reduce barotrauma. The word itself is saying intermittent mandatory ventilation. So, the, the machine will never mind the patient's respiratory drive. So, uh, during the patient's uh, to the patient's own uh, respirator drive also the machine will uh, give breath so make cause of uh, stacking uh, SAMV synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation is the ventilation most widely used in the hospital setup for the patients uh, a mode in which the ventilator delivers mandatory breath to the patient at or near the beginning of the spontaneous breath Mandatory breaths are synchronized with the patient's spontaneous effort to avoid breath stacking, the most safety mode. Uh, synchronized window refers to the time just prior to time triggering in which the ventilator is responsive to the patient's effort. That is typically 0.5 seconds. Advantages include uh, maintaining respiratory muscle strength, reduces uh, VQ mismatch, that is ventilation perfusion mismatch. Decreases mean airway pressure helps to wean the patient from ventilator. Next one is spontaneous. It is not an actual mode since the uh, rate and tidal volume during spontaneous breathing are determined by the patient. The role of ventilator during spontaneous breathing is to provide flow to the patient in a timely manner, flow adequate to fill, uh, fulfill a patient's inspiratory demand and uh, provide adjunctive modes such as beat to the complement of spontaneous effort. Apnea ventilation is a safety feature used for the spontaneous mode. These are some guidelines uh, in the initiation of mechanical ventilation. Use PEEP in diffuse lung injury and ARDS patients to support oxygenation and reduce FiO2. Avoid choosing ventilation, ventilator settings that limit expiratory time and cause or worse an auto PEEP that what we discussed before. When facing poor oxygenation, inadequate ventilation or high peak pressure due to intolerance of ventilator settings, consider sedation. Consider sedation, analgesia or neuromuscular blockage. And don't forget to follow doctor's orders always. Thank you.